Tacos come with consequences. Tacos come with consequences. <laughs> I think we both feel that way. They do. They I'm, so, if I, hey, if so I'm buying you tacos, do. you're probably putting that Yeah, well, hey, you know. All right. Good thing I haven't asked for tacos. <laughs> and now you know not to. <laughs> now I know not to ask for tacos. Hey, man, you're going to extort a senior about, taco? How about, how about you buy your own damn tacos? <laughs> how about that? <laughs> There's two ways this is going to go, and if you end up with tacos, you also end up with me. <laughs> I'm not right. my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You've done broke Garen. What have you done? Garen broke Garen. Mm. All right, let's record this uh, metal. How did we get here? Do, do the thing. Do the thing. Hi, guys, and welcome to... Dark Knight's Metal, not Dark Knight's Death Metal, but Dark Knight's Metal Deep Dive. Deep Dive. And I don't know how deep we're going to go Splash. with this one because it is a little hard to deep dive. So the first thing I want to recommend that you do is that you stop listening to this via the podcast and you go over to our YouTube channel and check with us there because what I'm about to talk about is a visual gag. Those so some pretty cool books. Garen is holding up the collected edition the hardcover. hardcover. Thank collected you. edition mm -hmm. of Dark Knight's Metal by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Capullo. Whatever. Capullo. Capullo, my butt. All right. You want me to Capullo your butt? No, he's Buy it's me Capullo. tacos first. It is clearly Capullo. So, is he clearly, clearly Capullo? So, the only thing I will say about buying the collected edition for this, unlike buying, say, Watchmen or Doomsday Clock or um, Justice League Dark Side War, is that there are a lot of tie-in books. In fact, when I pulled out my issues for Metal to read through to catch up for this here special, there's a stack about like that. Yeah, you found The Red Death. You found Murder Machine. The Bath You Laughs. Like so you there, said Devastator, The Drowned. Yeah, you found all the extras. And and the casting yeah. and the forge. Right. And, oh my God, there's so many tie-in books. Well, what we'll say, of this, what we're doing, the forge and casting are necessary. You don't have to have read them. It is not imperative, but it does help the story make sense. So it fills in a couple of gaps between the new 52 mm -hmm. and Metal. And some time had passed in Rebirth mm -hmm. since we had visited some facts. Yeah. Um, the Joker had been notoriously absent from the DCU up until this point. Yep. And so in... It, well, it, it well, is it the forge? Is it the forge and then the casting? Yes, forge and casting. Um, that's the order I read them in, so that's yep. really good. Yep. Um, in the forge, you find out well, first. This, first of all, that this is going to be a Hawkman heavy event, and you're like, damn oh, it, man. Um, <laughs> So, so there were supposed to be three. Wait, wait, wait. Shows. We don't really hate Hawkman, right? We like Hawkman. Hawkman, Hawk Girl is a good combination of characters, right? It was a JSA character. We like Hawkman, right? Okay. So Carter Hall, we like Carter Hall, right? We're just gonna say no. Really? Why are you giving me the dirty look for? So if I could get rid of, I if I, could, just if I could get two people off of the Justice League entirely. Uh, or out of the DC universe, it would be Hal Jordan and Carter Hall, who incidentally are the exact same cocky, uh, toxic masculinity male douchebag that should go away forever. I don't know that. Okay, you're probably right. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I can argue that you're wrong. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not going to argue that point. You're probably correct, especially about Carter Hall. Yeah, he like Hal. He is a total ass. Has Hal's, always been a total. Hal's ass. a tool. Yeah, but. My favorite part is the Green Arrow Hawkman rivalry. How the fact that Hawkman is the is the conservative, Arrow is the is the liberal, and they're constantly fighting with each other because of it. But they're best friends. I don't contri I don't contribute to things that propagate the two party system. It's not about two parties. It's about mm -mm. the how it's belief system. Mm -mm. Anyway, mm -mm. point being, mm -mm. they fought with each other a lot. I have to admit. I had been a little curious where the hell Hawkman had been for so long. Mm -hmm. Because from the end of Stormwatch, he's just gone. absent just until this. Yeah. And I How many opened... times the two of them have the two of them died? Not like, enough. Thirty or forty times over the Not years. Enough. I mean they've been died and resurrected, died and resurrected. They've been they've been detectives, they've been heroes, they've been And Egyptian. interestingly enough, Kendra Saunders and Shaira Hall are now two different people. Right. They have somehow, some way separated. I don't know. I missed all that probably because I hate the hawk people. 
Um, but um, it opens on Carter Hall in the past mm -hmm. talking about nth metal arriving on Earth. Earth and how there were three tribes. There were the wolves, the hawks, and the, the, the owls. The owls. The owls. And the fourth tribe was the dark tribe. That was the Bat Tribe. The Bat Tribe. And the Bat Tribe almost killed off the Owls. Now, you know where the Bat Tribe came from? Well, the Dark Multiverse is the answer to that question. No, 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 no. It's, very, it's even easier than that. When Batman died years ago, when he was finally killed, he basically went back in time. Oh, we're saying Final Crisis? No, no, no. no it's just, when when, when he got is, hit with the Omega Beams? Yeah, exactly. I thought that was Final Crisis. No, this is when the return of um, Batman, the return of Bruce Wayne. Okay. That's the, the book that, the, that Graham Morrison did. So essentially, Bruce Wayne was traveling through time. And when he went back in time, he had the cape and cowl with him. He had no memory of who he was. He sort of did, but he sort of didn't. He had survival skills. So he basically, he was the first person to form this tribe. And... He had people that wanted to follow him because he was able to beat the snot out of you know, some one of the other tribe, one of the other tribes. I think it was the, it was the owls, but I mean, literally, it's like he won, and so they followed him, and that's where the tribe originally came from. So that's even a throwback to the return of Bruce Wayne. I didn't read that. Yeah, it's good story. Yeah. yeah. So and it's him all through the ages, literally him him being a pirate, yeah. him being. So it's it was. I yeah, mean, I really need to read that. It was a little silly, but it's also very good at the same time. Well, Grant Morrison. <laughs> So <laughs> that's all you have to say. Yeah, say it, Grant Morrison. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, it's that epic type of thing that Grant Morrison does very well. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about metal. Right. So, Green Lantern talks to Gantet, who is not on Oa. He's on another. You know, have a problem there? Yeah. Sure, I guess, sorry. Um, he's on another planet, which is the current Guardian thing, and I have no idea what was going on there because I don't read Green Lantern because Hal Jordan's an ass. And um, so Gantet sends Hal Jordan to Earth and says, the next big cosmic level threat is coming from these coordinates. And it's the back cave. Hal Jordan goes <laughs> to the back cave. And instead of like opening his JLA communicator and be like, yo, Bats, I got orders. What's going on? You know, like a friend would do because Hal Jordan's a giant douche. <laughs> Um, he invades the Batcave. He just invades the Batcave, and, and he finds he finds Duke. the most the most ineffective Robin S character ever, Duke. And Duke kind of like lays a smack down on him. Now, no, to a normal person invading, Duke would probably beat the crap out of him. Now, the best just someone with a green ring. It's like no, you know, you're you're the you're best gonna... part of that. He's like, all right, so aren't you powerless aren't you... against yellow? Not if you know how to get around it. Yeah. So yeah. So I used to joke that Superman was way overpowered and could just do whatever the hell he wanted to and ignore his weaknesses. Hal Jordan has no weaknesses. Well, any lantern. I, except for a buxom woman. Well, <clears throat> I guess technically I know Hal Jordan doesn't actually need the lantern. Doesn't, uh, doesn't need the lantern anymore. The ring itself is its own power, and he powers the ring because of his willpower. So that's, that's a continuity shift that they did a while back. I'm waiting for Grant Morrison to like put it around his wang and it'd be the green ring in a totally different way and... I mean, it would fit his... Like, the green torch with the, the light. It light. would fit his machismo. So, anyway... God, I hate, I hate Hal Jordan. <laughs> so, Duke and Hal kind of ineffectually fight. <clears throat> and then they start every 80s horror movie ever. We should turn back. No, we should go deeper. <laughs> no, we should turn back. No, let's continue on. I fear nothing because I'm Hal Jordan. And I'm the man without fear. Hell and then... And then <clears throat> this throat> cave throat> within... The secret cave within the secret cave... Uh, that none of the Bat family supposedly knows about, but certainly not Duke, the newest member who was adopted like three days ago. Um, and they find? They find the Joker, who who narrates them One of it. the three Jokers. Because we still know there's three Jokers. This is one of the three. This is the one who's been missing. Now, this is an important thing, and I've said in one of our, our deep dives that I didn't know how Joker got his face back. He tells you that Dionysium, which is what resurrected him and Bruce, yeah. which incidentally, if they use the machine and they resurrected Bruce, there's two. Just saying there's two Batman. Anyway, so, uh, just saying, just saying there's two. Um, if he, it, it cured his death and all the scarring that was prior to his death yeah. um, and made him whole. So, 
But Bruce has been keeping him captive ever since. Yeah, Bruce has him in the cave, yeah. locked up, and the Joker is etching numbers on the wall, just a whole series of numbers, um, and you don't know why, and I don't think it's ever addressed. But he he talks about Batman being exposed to Dionysium. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things have happened where Bruce has been exposed to metals. And if you're exposed to these five specific metals, Nth Metal, Dionysium, whatever the one was that he got on Apocalypse when he went back to get Robin, I don't remember what it is, um, that other one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and finally, Batmanium. I'm not kidding, it's Batmanium. The fifth metal is Batmanium. No shit. Batmanium. <laughs> I love you, I Scott hoping, Snyder. I, was, uh, I love you, Scott Snyder. But Batmanium? I was hoping you were going to ignore that part. I was, no, I was like, please, no. don't, please don't say it. Please don't say it. Batmanium. Um, <clears throat> you open, Holy rest of you Batman. become a gate to the dark multiverse through which Barbatos. 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 Because if it's a D, it's Barbatos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really corny naming scheme. Um, <laughs> is able to escape. And Barbados has a whole entourage, if you will, of Batman from different realities, um, from the dark multiverse. So the dark multiverse has been pushing against the regular multiverse for quite some... The dark multiverse has known about the regular multiverse for a long time. But not vice versa. But exactly, not, but not vice versa. You would have thought someone would have said, someone like, I don't know, Batman. Mr. Terrific... Would have said, because the smartest man alive would have said, you know, if there's a regular multiverse, what about a dark multiverse? There, there could be. What about an alternate? So that's the thing. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Brought to you by the makers of Batmanium, the so, dark universe. Or, or, so, the, the bat shark spray. Bat shark repellent. So, anyway. So this, this is where we are in the forge. So we see, and of course we see then, um, to be they, fair, they let Joker out. They let Joker out. So there's this machine. Because you're Hal Jordan. There's this machine that that um, the Batman has been creating to help with all this. Joker destroys it, knowing full well that that is this machine could destroy the entire multiverse. Because ultimately, it's going to expose him to the fifth metal, right. And make him the gateway, right? And Joker knows this. This has been has been begging Batman not to do this. Of course, Batman is going to do what he wants anyway. So then we get we get some. That's what's really cool as he's beating up Duke. He's calling Duke by his new name, which is the first time we see hear this. The signal. The signal. Because, well, and let's just be clear about Duke Thomas for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Duke Thomas it decides to be a superhero because Joker jokerized his parents. His mother is actually a servant of the immortal man and knows all of this stuff. So what's really interesting is, and so... They got Jokerized, so they would so they wouldn't be able to tell anybody. That's yeah. why Joker did it. So Duke now now here's the thing. What is interesting is we find out later on in, after Metal, because post Metal, we find out that Duke is actually a metahuman. Right. That's what's interesting. He isn't just some kid, just with, just endowed with powers. His, He's a metahuman. His powers is gonna be corny. His his powers to use emotion and uh, what was it? His emotion, right? He was using emotion to. To reveal, I can't. I'm remember. certain I don't. Know. I mean, it was it was. I hate. It was probably one of the dumbest things DC's I hate ever done. Duke Thomas. I don't no. hate Duke. I do. I do. I do. Because him and Lucius Fox are the same character. They pretty much are. I Batwing <clears throat> and the Signal are the same character. Only Batwing is arrogant. Well, Batwing is Tony Stark. Period. He is. Yeah. He is a. He is a. An alternate reality Tony Stark here, who's much, and Duke isn't quite as smart as that. So, smart kid, but not that smart. So, why, why can't we have one dumb Robin? Oh wait, Jason Todd. Oh wow, too soon. No, actually, he's really, really bright. He's now. He also went in the Lazarus pit. <laughs> You're saying it fixed his mush brains? I, I think it fixed, fixed something. If he, something was mushed after he got the crap knocked out of him by Joker. I mean, crowbar to the head will slow you down. Couple times, yeah, that'll do it. So we have the forge. Okay, so with the forge. I mean, basically, we just talk about both the forge and the casting. Well, sort of. And but, we touched on metal. But the casting is is more is, is deeper though. The casting is 
them finding out that there is something. But we, we look at um, we look at the the actual device that he's using. Signal actually recreates the device with his gift. And then right? you you find out that Batman has Plastic Man in an egg form. Right. But apparently, Plastic Man has been in he's been dormant for a while because apparently he has nth metal infused inside him. So he's protecting the nth metal, which is interesting. So, and of course, I actually, years ago when metal first came out, I had one of our regulars going, I don't know, what's that egg thing? I'm like, oh. what's, what's that egg thing? I was like, what's, what's the egg? I said, it's Plastic Man. I'm like, no, 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 the egg. I said, yes. And I pulled up a picture of Plastic Man. I said, notice the colors? Notice the, like, oh, that's Plastic Man. Like, yes, that's Plastic Man. Who still hasn't really kind of made a resurgence. Oh, it's terrific. See, oh, he absolutely has. Oh, yeah. And it? if you haven't read it, it, it's actually pretty, it's a good book. So I can't trust a comic book slot. I don't know. <laughs> I say things and then you don't listen, but then you go, oh, that was pretty good. I should read that. Uh, you won me over with humans, vampires, and the ninja. Yeah, there you go. Right. So, all right. Lead them dry. So then we get into metal. And Bruce is running around being Bruce in a la Tower of Babel, Bruce. Of course, and you can't ask for help. Because yeah. why would you ask for help? It's not you. You can't. You don't have to fight all this. You don't have to do this by himself. This is basically this. This is like the after school lesson for this book. Yeah. You don't have to do it alone. And and so Bruce is running around, and the Justice League basically is running around behind him, going, "No, no, wait, not that. You're falling in the trap. Whoops, no." And then he does, and then Barbatos rises with the Batman who laughs, who has conveniently uh, a cadre of of Batman. Batman who correspond to the Justice League. So what's the Doomsday one's name? Devastator. Devastator. Yeah. And Devastator's to take out Superman. Yeah. And he has basically the war bat. I forget what his name is. Uh, but Ares' version who yeah. killed Diana. Right. Um, there's there's the um, murder machine, which is Cyborg. The murder machine is the Cyborg. The drowned, which is uh, Aquaman. Aquaman, which is Mira. From an from alternate reality, which is only it's not. She's it's Bryce Wayne. Bryce Wayne, exactly. Yeah. So um, um, then there's uh, Red Death, which is Flash. Flash. Uh, the Lantern. Ollie Zoom, basically. Well, yeah. Well, no, but it's it's actually it's, it's Bruce Wayne. It's, it's Barry's. It's the it's, a, it's Barry and and Bruce merged. Right. Which is weird. Um, and then what was that Green Lantern one? That was um. Mm. There's a lantern too, and I apologize. It was long. awful. Yeah, I didn't read the ancillary stuff because it's been such a long time. I, I mean, didn't catch if, back up on those. In all reality, it should have just been a Batman with a yellow lantern. I mean, it would have. It would have made more sense. Yeah. So, but it was a Batman with a green lantern. We do know. We do know that Bruce Wayne, our Bruce Wayne, the Bruce Wayne, could have been in the Green Lantern Corps. Could have been the Yellow Lantern Corps. Could have been the Yellow Lantern Corps. <laughs> I mean, give me. They could have been. Speaking of which, we missed yeah. a thing on Death Metal where. Bruce activated a Black Lantern ring yeah. and resurrected Jonah Lantern. Hex. We, we missed a big Resurrected piece. Jonah Hex and a bunch of zombies. Yeah. And, yeah like, uh, and it's like, um, yeah, beware of my power. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty great. So, How many lanterns does he have? Because I guarantee he's got a bunch of rings. I sitting. think he treated them like Pokemon and collected them all. Which, ever, and by the way, we're doing this because we want to talk about death metal, obviously. But for a lot of people, they didn't read death metal. In fact, that's... They didn't read metal. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read metal. It's interesting. I have a lot of a lot of customers who are really excited about the death metal book, but I'm like, so they're like, where do I need to start? I'm like, metal. are you kidding? You didn't read metal? No, I just started reading comic books. All right, well, let's get you this book first, and now I'm gonna get you the Justice League. I'm gonna get you the Bat Who Laughs. I'm also gonna get you Hell Risen. Yeah, because that that will catch up. Yeah, yeah. That's about about a month with reading. Yeah. So <laughs> ultimately, what comes out of metal? is uh, Bruce and Clark are defeated by the Bat Who Laughs and sent into the Dark Multiverse right. um, where they find um, Carter Hall turned into a Master of the Forge, but basically a, a brainless bird. Yeah, you want to talk about the dream who tried to stop all of this? Yeah, it's interesting. So... One of the things that DC has done over the past few years is they've merged universes. So it used to be Sandman Universe was completely separate. The Watchmen Universe was completely separate. Nope. We know with Doomsday Clock, clearly that's not a thing. And we know with the Dreaming, that is also not separate. Yeah. Um, that fact... Morpheus appears. And he and Bats knows exactly who he is. Yeah. But only Bats. Most of them don't know who the Dreaming is. They don't, they don't know the characters. So um, I, I, do, I do love the fact that we've got... 
I, I will say this: the one thing that's nice about metal, it's a lot of other team, a lot of other books, is they do f pull the whole team together. It's all yeah. the bats. It's all the Justice League. They're pulling the whole teams together. I do. Uh, so we see in the, in the very first issue of Metal, um, Challenger Mountain appears inside Gotham. Gotham. And Challenger Mountain, now remember, Challenger of the Unknown is a book that most people have, a lot of people are modern readers have never heard of. They were gone for a long time. And basically they were the ones who, they were the adventurers that would go into outer space and, and, and do like, oh, what is this planet over here? Let's go explore there. And, and they'd find new things. Well, the Challenger of the Unknown were basically the ones that were sent to find out what the hell's going on with this dark multiverse. Because because Kendra Hall, or I'm sorry, Kendra Saunders, excuse me, who is also Hawk Woman, Hawk Girl, she's Hawk Girl. Kendra's Hawk Girl, and Hawk Woman is Shira. Shira. Hall, who is? Even I get a little confused by that one. Who um, is a Thanagarian right. leader. Um, so yeah, that's there's a, there's a <laughs> there's a lot to unpack in these issues. They really are. They're very complex. I mean, even Mister Terrific comes to make an appearance to to the Batcave to go help Batman because when Batman asks for help, Mister Terrific is nice, like, "Okay, well, you're right. I do. I can help you." So I was going to sum this thing up. Okay, yeah. help me sum it up. So. Guys, I don't want to read to you page by page what's going on here. So basically, Bat Who Laughs and his team of Bat Justice League, Dark Bat Justice League, defeat the Justice League, banish Clark and um, Bruce into the Dark Multiverse. Um, there's lots of fine points like Batman using Baby Dark Side. Um, and dark side. while they're there, they run across... Um, a mutated Hawkman working the World Forge, mm -hmm. and um, find out that. And if you're if you're watching on YouTube, this is the this is the big the big picture reveal, the really cool one. All the all the bats that are the anti bats. So yeah, pretty awesome. Anyway, yeah. the bats that perfectly match who they need to destroy. Yeah, in their Justice League mm -hmm. power, counterpart. Um, and by the way, um, if you did read the ancillary stuff, you probably knew that the first appearance of the Bat Who Laughs is in Teen Titans 12. Right. Which is a big collectible issue, of course, still, because the Bat Who Laughs is a character that's not going to go away anytime soon. So, uh, well. I mean, technically, if you read Death Metal, they may have gone away in the first issue. Yeah, but I think that's not going uh, anyway. So, Clark and, uh, and Bruce are able to free Carter Hall. Yeah. Now, by uh, the way, they've aged... Like fifty or sixty years while they're in this, and what they're what Barbatos is trying to do is pull the part of it, the positive universe down into the negative universe right. and rule all of reality. So that's basically what's happening. And again, this is this is the this is the the part of this is one of those lessons that we see time and time and time and time and time again with Batman. He refuses to be a team player. And when he refuses to be a team player, he doesn't do well until he gets his team together. Right. I was just like, come on, man. But but it's and he's doing it again. He does. And the main continuity right he is. now. He he's, is. he's pushed the entire Bat family away. Alfred's gone, blah, blah, blah. But this is the perfect coming together. Um, they escaped the the dark multiverse. And by the way, all this has to do with nth metal. Yeah. We've known we've known about nth metal for years and years because nth metal is what the is what Carter and um, Shaira's um, wings and the weapons are wings, made. They're, they're made from nth metal, which is yeah. super, super light, super, super durable, and it conducts energy. And the 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 nth metal in their blood is what causes them to resurrect. It exactly. came from a meteorite, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So Clark and Bruce escape. Mm -hmm. They get all their buddies together, and they defeat Barbados, leaving the bat who laughs. laughs Without his, without his his league of bats. The league of bats are sent packing. Yeah. Either they either they die because, like with Red Death, I mean, he was part Flash. Yeah. He real Barry realized that the part of him that was left over sacrificed himself. Right. The part of Cyborg that was left over sacrificed himself. The Devastator was never going to do that. It had right. to be destroyed. But um. So, um. We, we the, the point of metal was to introduce the dark multiverse right. and set into motion a Bruce Wayne who has all the secrets and all the power and all the knowledge um, into the main universe and have all the fun in Justice League. Right. Metal basically sits up Scott Snyder's Justice League run, mm -hmm. which is the the 
uh, Justice Do More, and that then sets up Death Metal. Well, so, but then that sets up Hell Risen, which then goes to Death Metal. Right. Is that right? That is 100% oh, yeah. correct. Because yeah, without, without Hell Risen, there's a lot of explanation. Well, you need Hell Risen so that, spoiler alert, um, Perpetua drops Apex Lex yeah. yeah. for the Bat Who Laughs. Different story altogether. If you don't know about Apex Lex, go read the Justice League from Scott Snyder. Oh, so good. Some of the best Justice League that's ever been written, period. Yeah. Genuinely. Guys, we gave it to you in broad strokes on purpose. Do yourself a favor. This is, I mean, it's Scott Snyder. His writing's amazing. Read the details on this one and get get you get you the the the, the detail on the page in your mind. Um, you don't have to have read metal to read death metal, no. but it definitely is a, a foundational piece that you'll appreciate. But it's, it's going to explain itself because yeah. DC most companies do this when they start something big. They're going to explain themselves. There's little things you don't understand though, and you're going to go what what what? So All please right. understand that's why we're here to help out. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate you. You guys have fun. Do, 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 do. Uh, so we're going to talk about X of Swords having 24 issues and needing an effing handbook. Is that what we're going to talk about that soon? Holy. <laughs> <laughs>